Welcome to the Cleveland Open, followed by the Champions Tour, Cedar Lodge Legends of Golf with Jack, Lee Trevino, Gary Player. And again, we'll be back here at Historic St. Louis Country Club, 5 o'clock Eastern time for the conclusion of this, the 38th Curtis Cup match. If you want to take a look at one of the true great teams in the history of this competition, make sure to tune in and you'll get to enjoy one of the greatest golf courses in America. So for Karen Stupples, Steve Burkowski, Jane Crafter, Phil Park, and the USGA's Mark Hill, I'm Mike Chris saying our time is up. We thank you for yours. This has been a presentation on the only worldwide network dedicated to the game, Golf Channel, part of NBC Sports. Third round coverage of the Web.com Tours Cleveland Open at Lakewood Country Club, Westlake, Ohio. Whit Watson and Craig Perks, our final group today. 35-year-old Jeff Curl and 39-year-old Matthew Goggin. This at the 10th. After a beautifully positioned drive, just a short iron to this right hole location and nicely done in the center of the green, underneath the hole. Well done. Goggin is a four-time winner on the Web.com Tour, three times a graduate of the Web.com Tour. Curl, who's only four years younger, yeah, considerably like less right experience. Right um, six. Just a little. Just a little, huh? Exactly, man. I mean, it's no more than the number with that club. Just his 85th start on the Web.com Tour career. He's played just five PGA Tour events. Very aggressive tee shot. Just a sand wedge here for Jeff from the left side of the fairway. Really good angle to that right hole location. And underneath the hole as well, these guys are finally figuring out this A.W. Tillinghast classic. Now the scoring average has improved each of the first three days as the players navigate this course, most of them for the first time. Wee Kim over at 11, playing his second from the rough. The players have had to deal with four inch rough this week and that's a pretty good shot coming out of that stuff to control the distance. The 22 year old Wee Kim just one shot off the lead at the Cleveland Open. channel in association with the PGA Tour proudly presents the web.com tour in Westlake Ohio it's third round coverage of the Cleveland Open in northern Ohio the north coast the shores of Lake Erie in the city of Cleveland welcoming the web.com tour back for the first time since 2007 about 15 minutes west of downtown you'll find the town of Westlake and Lakewood Country Club. An A.W. Tillinghast design, classic layout, dates back to 1921. And the Web.com tour has enjoyed picture-perfect conditions for the last two and a half days here at Lakewood. About 75 degrees today, not much wind at all. It's gotten steadily warmer each of the first three rounds. Alongside Craig Perks, Whit Watson with you today for our third round coverage on the golf course. Phil Blackmar and Trip Eisenhower, 11th of 25 Web.com Tour events in 2014. After those two approaches at 10, we head out to the 10th green. Matthew Goggin, first to go for birdie. Phil Blackmar is with this group today. I really don't see a whole lot in this putt. I, I really like his body language right now. I tell you, he looks very happy, very comfortable. Very confident over his shots. See if we can roll this one in there relatively straight. At the 14th, Ryan Armour, who's three under on his round today. Pretty much just straight up the hill. That would have been a really nice bounce back for Ryan after the bogey at 14, the par five. You hate to put a six on the scorecard. Right, right, right. 
Matthew Goggin tapped in for his par at 10, and now Jeff Curl. Very similar to the putt on one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Like that? Yeah, but it's like the fall. It's kind of just stuck to the left. It's still kind of fall. Well, I've got it going just a little bit to the left, a little bit uphill. It needs to keep his pace or it might break out of the hole on him. Putted beautifully the first two days. Phil just had 51 putts. And that ball just started left of his intended line. Got a, a large piece of the hole, but pretty solid first 10 holes when you're in the final group. Birdied the opening hole and now nine straight pars. So Curl remains at 10 under par. He is one off the lead. Wee Kim is also one off the lead. Two under on his round today. The 22-year-old with a chance to tie at 11 under. Wee Kim has um, led the field in putting through two rounds and really rolling the ball beautifully today. Um, this is about 30 feet up the hill. Very straight putt. You very seldom out here. You're gonna have a putt this length that doesn't have much break in it. Yeah, Trippier, 26 putts. I mean, uh, 46 putts for the first two days. That's averaging 23. So he's certainly got these greens. Figure out good speed there. You don't want to be too aggressive. Run that three or four feet past. Tap in par for Wee Kim to stay one back. Our leader, Goggin, on the tee at 11. Par four measures 432 still, yards. Thank you. Had to wait for the, another group to tee off on the 15th hole. A little breeze back in the player's face here. Going with the driver. A lot of players use three woods here the first couple days, but with the breeze in the face, both players should go with drivers. And he really looks comfortable with his golf swings. It's a simple, it's an efficient golf swing. Generally hits a lot of fairways and can get it out there a long way. Here is Jason Gore at the 14th, the 601 yard par five, his second. And he's got a three wood that he can carry comfortably about 265 in the air. Be good, be good. Four under on a ground. And look at this yeah, thing going right shot. at the flag. Great golf shot. 601 yards, and he's on the back of the green. Easy. Easy does it. <laughs> Curl at 11. Got a lesson from his dad at Colonial a couple weeks ago. Went from playing a draw to playing a cut, and that's a perfect cut starting down the left-hand side, cutting back into the fairway. Yeah, I talked to him on the range, Phil. He talked about really opening his stance and just hitting as hard as he can left to right. Very confident with the driver right now. Clear. And welcome to our third round coverage of the Cleveland Open on Golf Channel with Watson and Craig Perks. This final group separated by just four years in age. But as mentioned, the experience level between Jeff Curl and Matthew Goggin, pretty significant and uh, interesting to watch here on moving day. Yeah, it's a really interesting dynamic you talked about. I did a little tail of the tape and kind of broke down their careers. You can see, Jeff, this is only the second time that he's held or been a co-share of the of the 36-hole lead, Matt Goggin. But if you go deeper into their careers, really divergent paths right here. Jeff's 36, Matt Goggin's 39. Combined starts, PGA Tour, Web.com Tour. Jeff Curl, 90 starts. Matthew Goggin, 408. Matt Goggin's got seven wins, four on this tour. Look at the earnings, 8.5 million, only 332,000. This is a major championship sort of venue. We remember back to Matt Goggin when he finished fifth. He played in the final group with Tom Watson at Troon. He finished fifth. Uh, Jeff Curl has never finished better than inside the top 50 at a U.S. Open. So divergent careers. It's interesting as they come together, control the nerves, control the adrenaline. It's going to be a fascinating watch. And different paths to get to this final group. Group, as a matter of fact, Goggin leading the field in greens and regulation over the first two rounds. Curl second in putts per round over the first two rounds. They are our final group, third round coverage of the Cleveland Open. Today's coverage is brought to you by Rustoleum Never Wet Fabric. This changes everything.
The new Win Pro X putter grips. Feel the winning difference. You say it, we build it. It's as easy as web.com. We Kim on the tee at the 12th. 183 yards, wind out of the left, and uh, this is a 7-iron. Nice looking shot. The wind's not touching this one. Really small target here at the 12th trip, and any shot on the green is excellent. That one's even better, right underneath the hole. He'll have a great opportunity to get the three under on his round. Tie for lead. Back over with the final group. Jeff Curl, Matthew Goggin at the 11th, the par four. Just a little wedge shot here from 133 yards, went from the left hook. Very right back of the green, can't afford to go Sit. over. Get down. Tough up and down from behind the screen, and that's a mental mistake there. Yeah, that's a huge area. You wouldn't even, he's flown that probably 15 yards too far. You wouldn't even want to get within 10, 15 feet of that flag with concern of going over. Back at 14, recall that Jeff Gore blasted his second shot to the back of the green at the par five. This is third. Significant movement to the right late. He'll have that left for birdie. Chance to get to 10 under and within one shot of the lead. Yeah, he's playing with so much confidence. Had a fourth place in Puerto Rico. Two top threes out here. Back at 11. But I, I wouldn't hesitate to play it straight across with maybe a yard of hurt. That's it. Just a flight of one of these? Yeah, no more than the number again. But Jeff has 124 and a bit perplexed by the wind after watching Goggins' ball here, so took a little extra time trying to figure it out. Appears to be just left to right. This has to be 15 feet short after seeing Goggin go long. It's an aggressive play. Um, oh, huge, wow. huge mistake, Phil. Particularly after just seeing Goggin go over. Yeah, that that's, that's unimaginable right there, to be honest with you. This is a golf course. You throw away the pole location sheet. You just put it, every ball in the center of the fairway. Big mistakes. The Titleist leaderboard. Titleist, the number one ball in golf. Matthew Goggin with a one-shot lead. He and Wee Kim both two under on their rounds today. Dowie Vanderwalt, 65 today. Stephen Alker, who won on the Web.com Tour last year, also shot 65. As mentioned, the scoring average has been dropping each of the first three days. These players are figuring it out, and there are scores out there. Byron Smith with a 66. He just won last week on the Web.com Tour at the Rex Hospital Open. Todd Hamilton. Alex Roca, a number of players with 66s already in the clubhouse today. This is the golf ball of Ryan Armour at 15 with his second. And a difficult hole location at 15 yeah, today. Yeah, especially with that slightly downwind from the left. Gore to get within one. Yeah, I talked to Jason on the range this morning. Said, you said my golf swing hasn't changed. He worked eight months with Mac O'Grady. And I said, no, the, the performance really hasn't changed. And, but he said, no, it's got a little bit more round. Really swinging at it beautifully right now. Birdie at the par five for Gore. So he is within one. Three players now at 10 under. One thing about this golf course that you pointed out earlier this week, Craig, you cannot be long. There's maybe, maybe two holes out here where you can hit it past the green and have a <laughs> chance at par. Definitely not here, Phil. No, and the good news for Goggin is he's got a the very got a pretty good lie, the best of the two lies for sure. Not a lot of green to work with. You can see how he's got the face laid way open. A little bit of a downhill lie, which makes this much more difficult. He's going to try to slip the sun and get it to land softly. Good shot. He landed it into the fringe. Release down there. Did he make it? Oh, yes. How about that Indeed. one? Yes. <laughs> You hit that second shot right where you needed to. Oh my goodness. What a shot. Man, that's just some of the breaks you need. Such a, a, a catastrophic error, really, on the second shot. And to walk out of here with three, he's staring five right in the face, and he knew it. Uh, he's got to feel very good about that one. So Goggin, now to oh. Wee Kim, just to get to 11 under. All right. Three under on his round and now tied with, no, excuse me, we still one back after Matt Doggin after Matt chipped in. 
Now back to 11. And this is a much more difficult lie sitting down in this bluegrass and downhill high on top of it. Really hard to get this soft out of this lie. You just have to hit it hard enough to make sure you can get it out, and that's what happens. That was just a tail of two different lies there. Back over to the par 4 15th. Yeah, my mistake. I said he'd actually bogeyed the par 5, but he made a par back there. So this would be a good birdie with that tough hole location you talked about to get to 5 under on the round. Very good effort. Grew up 50 miles from here in Akron, Ohio. Went to school in Ohio State, so got to be comfortable playing in this state. Jeff Curl back at the 11th. This is the par putt that we expected both players would probably have with where they ended up in two, but just saw Goggin chip in from the back of the green. Now this to save par for Curl. Well, he's putted well all year. He's 11th in putting on the yearly stats, so to putt well the first two days is no surprise. A lot of subtleties in these greens, though, that Tillian has is very typical of his style of design. Little bitty ridges and knolls can make it sometimes hard to pick up the break. This is a big, I think a big putt momentum-wise. Just it'd be a huge mental mistake to be in the middle of the fairway, 124 out and walk away with the bogey. Yeah, sometimes when you can get out of here and make a huge save, that helps the confidence even more than, than a string of birdies. Especially after seeing what Matt Goggin did. And sometimes the mistake is you force something to happen, and that was the case there. And that, you know, it's like the second shot over the green. We know the back, that whole location, just four paces from the back, it's straight downhill. And now he's got a very difficult putt to save his bogey. But you can't win a golf tournament on Saturday usually, but you certainly can lose one. And, and this would be really hard to swallow to make double. This is not an easy putt. You saw how fast Goggins' chip was coming down this way. So not an easy putt here from probably three and a half, four feet. Pretty quick. Just one drop shot for Jeff Curl. He is back to even par on the day. Jason Gore is five under today. Wee Kim is three under today. And Matt Goggin, three under on his round after this chip in at the 11th. The reverse broadcaster's kibosh. It's exactly where he wanted to be. And he leads by one. A look at the 12th, the par 3 at Lakewood Country Club. Right at the second, there's slight hill. Right the left. We got 60 front. Yeah. I mean, it's 57 front. Matthew Goggin has the honors coming off birdie at 11. Right off the left, 67. Well, the breeze is really swirling around down in these trees. Up above the trees, it's left to right, but where I'm standing, it's actually from the right, back in the player's face. Such a small green, anything, Craig, on this green is a birdie putt. Yeah, it certainly is. You only missed four greens in regulation through the first day, two days. He's missed five today. Maybe a little out of sorts. And yeah, he's lost this one left, headed towards the bunker. Looked like it may have stayed in the grass and not in the bunker, and that's a bad break. To the tee at the 16th, Ryan Armour. 158 yards today. But a couple of hole-in-ones here oh, this week. Hole location really right in the center, very accessible. Watch out. <laughs> oh, skim the flag stick as it went by. Justin Lauer dunked one on the first day. Rob Oppenheim made an ace on day two at 16. Back to 12 tee. And see if Jeff Curl can get something going here. He had a good chance for birdie at nine, wasn't able to convert. Lipped it out at 10, and then the unforced bogey there at 11 from the fairway. See if he can hit a good iron shot in here and get a putt at birdie. Yeah. And this is headed right towards the right hand bunker. A little bit of a compensation error there. We saw one go left. You don't want to go left, short side yourself. And 
he has a tendency to get a little bit more open with his stance and he gets the club stuck behind him and can cause the block. Jason Gore with his second to 15. From the right rough, really no chance to get to that left hole location that's just over that bunker. Shoot this in the middle of the green. Very smart play from the soon to be, oh, just turned 40 year old. Just eight paces on and six off the left at 15. That's going to be a tough pin to get to. Matthew Goggin at 12 under. We Kim, 11 under and one back. Third round coverage of the Cleveland Open. Ryan Armour, this to get within two. In the hole. Five under on his round, no bogeys. Get a lot of support from the locals. Now Jason Gore at 15. There's so much slope working this way. So you just swing it out to the right, and then it's just going to fall left. And driving in the rough, you paid the penalty. It's just a layup off the tee. There's no way you can get to that front hole location. You just four is a good score. Back to 12, Curl playing his second out of the bunker. And a nice uphill line, plenty of green to work with. Oh, really good. Yeah, you make the make make the mistake at 11, then you hit a poor iron shot at the par 3 12, be good to get up and down. We Kim at 13. 130 yards downwind, this is a pitching wedge, got to take a little off oh. of it. And he might have taken a little too much off of it. Yeah, it landed right in the fringe, okay. jumped on the green, That's came back, and it's a very narrow neck in where that hole is located at 13. Got to be very precise. I know, but that's... Goggin in the other bunker at 12. And a very nice uphill line. Not much green to work with, but the line makes it a fairly easy shot. <laughs> Exquisite display of short game the last two, two holes. First look at 18 today, the par 4, 418 yards. Rod Pampling out of the left rough. The yeah, hole location just five paces from the left, 